and downs and mostly downs, I had stuff and things to say. And I said my piece, mostly, but I wanted to do one final video to be sort of like the epitaph out of the requiem, uh, you know, just slap it up the tombstone. Finally, we're done and capping the conversation on these games. But these are games that I really liked. I hyped them up, but um, you know, just seeing the views on my channel, it, it didn't seem like too many people were really that interested. It didn't seem like too many people were too engrossed with these games or maybe they just didn't know about them. It just seems like they all fell for lots of different reasons, but they fell. And the thing is, is the developers and the publishers just didn't care. They just didn't care to keep the hype alive, to keep pushing, keep trying to do something special because these games all had something a little bit special about them. They just didn't care about it enough. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys did. Uh, we actually see some of these games living on in like fan games or spiritual successors. And hopefully we will see in the future, maybe a resurgence of games like these in ways, but these games are dead. So yeah, uh, that's it. They're shut down. They're shutting down this year. And that is it for them. It's a tragedy, but let's talk about it. All right, the first game that we're going to be talking about is Paragon. Paragon was a over-the-shoulder action MOBA by Epic Games. And Epic is a company that knows defeat, absolutely, but it also knows wild success. And a lot of people would attribute Paragon's failure to the success of Fortnite, which is untrue, as Epic also is running literally Unreal Tournament as a free-to-play game with like no player base. I don't even think there's monetization and they're still keeping that alive. I don't think they needed to shut down Paragon, but in the end, they had a concept for Paragon, which was uh, frankly greedy. They wanted to make money on Paragon. It wasn't really so much uh, a pure creative concept. You can clearly see it. It's basically a prettier smite that played slower and actually had much more limitations despite adding verticality. In the end, Paragon still could have been something really cool, though a lot of the kits were kind of copy-paste. It could have evolved into something unique. A lot of games start out as one thing and then grow into something really crazy. We can literally see that with Fortnite. But Paragon, even though it actually did have a, a number of players playing the game, it just didn't make enough money for how much they wanted to put into it, how much they wanted to push it. They really wanted something more from Paragon. And that initial, uh, you know, the initial polish really turned on a lot of people. But frankly, I have to say, I really like Gigantic much more. I really love Smite much, much more. But it seems like MOBAs in general are kind of falling away. And Paragon didn't do enough new and just wasn't sexy enough. But it had something. It was a little sexy, wasn't it? It did add verticality. It, it kind of did do some things a little bit. But uh, there is actually a fan recreation of Paragon. Whether that will succeed or not, I don't know. But I'm not against having a new action MOBA jump in. There is actually some Chinese ones out there and Smite is still doing okay. But I think we could revisit MOBAs once again, though Gigantic was definitely my vote for that. But even that is actually going to be making the list of so spoiler alert. But um, Paragon, how I felt about it, frankly, it was boring and it was slow. And every time I mention that, people say, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Fight me. Anyways, uh, Paragon could have been something cool, though. It definitely had the potential, but just didn't live up to it because Epic they, they wanted more money. They wanted more money. And I think that actually restricted development just a little bit. And literally, they shut it down. Next up, we have another MOBA, but this one was actually really different and unique and special. And that's going to be Master X Master. Uh, I actually did do a sponsored video for Master Master, and I had fun with the game myself. I thought it was a really cool concept to have a MOBA that was also an action RPG. So it had these instance dungeons that you ran through with your characters, also with the unique gimmick that you swapped characters, uh, which I haven't seen too much. There's a couple of action RPGs that did that, like Lego minifigures, and there's this game that just recently released, which is a no-name, but essentially not many games do it. And I thought it was fun because they also did this in the PvP. It was broken in PvP, but I don't know, just the, the ideas all thrown together in this game, like each individual one was really special and unique, but I think it kind of just became a clusterfuck of a lot of different things that just played very differently and strange and it didn't really hit a sweet spot for anybody. So it actually had a ton of mini games, but then it had like hardcore kind of raids and like a hardcore dungeon scene, but then it had PVP, but it was like two different kind of PVPs, like one super duper casual and then one that was kind of competitive. I don't know. It, it tried to hit too many notes, I think at the same time, while also making all those different aspects of the game entwined with like a tremendous amount of grind and debatably pay to win. So all those factors combined, despite all, you know, notes of really awesome stuff all entwined within it, it was all perverted. So tragically, as you know, if you can make a bullet point list of the mechanics of Master Master, it sounds hype as hell. But when you actually play the game and you feel the game flow, 
it's just such a slog. It was so slow and it could have been so amazing, especially because it did also have the gimmick of incorporating characters from all of NCSoft's stuffs. From Blade and Soul, you had freaking Guild Wars, you know, it had a lot of different games and some original characters too. It could have been basically a Heroes of the Storm. It had a lot of unique ideas, but man, I don't know. They just kind of squeezed it dry, similar to Paragon. Halfway on the list, we have a game that is technically still playable, but it is shutting down next month. Uh, officially, it will be shut down. So that's gonna be Wildstar. Now I'm going to actually be playing this game. I will stream it the final day uh, that it has, and I'll probably do a video or two about it. If you guys wanna collaborate with me, uh, that'd be great. I would love to do that. But basically, I just wanna mention that Wildstar, I don't think should have been shut down. Unlike the past two games that we talked about that kind of had monetization issues, uh, this game generally was pretty fair, I thought. I mean, it definitely had a lot of issues. Uh, but as a dungeon crawler, I thought it worked pretty well. I think a lot of people received the end game well enough, at least when it came to after launch. I mean, the launch was rough and we saw it basically dropped off the face of the planet. It had to go free to play, but it still had this wonky feeling of it wanted to be an MMO, but its MMO stuff was actually just bad. Uh, the stuff that made it cool was the instance housing, the instance dungeons, the instance, yeah, actually everything. So basically, if it didn't try to be an MMO and it tried to be something more like Skyforge or Destiny or an MMO light, right? Or just an online action RPG, I think it would have done so much better and it wouldn't have had all these wasted resources and it wouldn't have cost as much to keep the servers up and it just, it would have been better. But they, they had this big grand idea, this concept, and they frankly kind of half-assed it in a lot of ways, but it did have a lot of polish in a lot of other ways. So it's a really mixed bag ups and downs and it's kind of tragic to see it go because mm, I think it does have a lot of wasted potential, but there was also, unlike a lot of other games, a lot of stuff that it just did right. And frankly, I think objectively in a lot of ways, it was better than World of Warcraft. But of course, in a lot of ways, it was also worse. Regardless, I think it should still be alive at least. And um, I think that's what hurts the most is that it really deserves to at least be running. Number two on the list, I'm putting Lawbreakers. Now, I'm actually ranking this list based off of my personal enjoyment of the game. Uh, personally, like how much hope and hype I had for the title. Now, Lawbreakers, I should have seen it coming because my views for the videos were just garbage. Nobody was really paying attention to Lawbreakers, but they weren't really promoting it that well. And I was following Lawbreakers from the very beginning. I was following all these hero shooters from the very beginning. I was doing top tens on hero shooters since the Gigantic was announced. And Lawbreakers seemed really interesting because it was all about movement mechanics and Unreal Games uh, has always been about that. You know, Gears of War with the wall bouncing, you know, the cover mechanics, Unreal with the vehicles and then the fast paced nature. Uh, and of course, other arena shooters, it's always like any shooter, it's about the movement mechanics. Uh, it's not so much about what you aim and how you aim, it's about how you dodge, how you move through the maps uh, that gives that playability of shooters. So Lawbreakers realized this, but then they failed in everything else. Uh, and th they went a little bit too bonkers without actually I guess if the game looked like Overwatch, I honestly think it would still be running right now. I think that, I mean, of course there's other problems too, like the Nexon publishing and the price, I don't I don't agree with it. Um, there was a lot to Lawbreakers that just didn't make sense in the space that it was. You know, like it is no Blizzard, it is no Overwatch, um, but it, it looked very generic in a lot of ways. Even though raw mechanics, it actually played pretty unique. It just, and it's a video game and visuals do matter, especially in a competitive game. It was just so messy and blurry. It played a little bit too fast sometimes and then too slow in other times. Overall, it's game flow and game pace just wasn't really good unless you played like the Assassin maybe or uh, the Wraith. Those classes were really fun. You were always on, but it just, it, it was this weird mix of bad publicity as well. Like people saying that uh, it wasn't like Overwatch. It wasn't a hero shooter. This is an arena shooter. Technically, Lawbreakers is not an arena shooter. It does not have arena mechanics. It does not have arena pickups. It, it is a hero shooter, and it's not even a hybrid like Quick Champions is. That's an arena hero shooter. No, Lawbreakers is straight up a hero shooter. It straight up has classes. It straight up had roles. And when you actually got into the meta of the game, you realized it wasn't really balanced. It, it just didn't really play that good. And honestly, it needed to be baked for so much longer. I feel like it almost was rushed out. And the art, the art direction seriously cannot be understated. That probably ruined the game, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, Lawbreakers, um, a lot of little tiny things were wrong with it, but it was a lot of little tiny things. And in a competitive esport game, which by the way, did not even promote any tournaments or any esportage, which Overwatch did immediately, which is why it succeeded. Yeah, no, I think I really want to just blame it on rushing the game out. And also the publishing was really bad in an online only game. That goes a really long way. You might want to criticize Overwatch for doing what it does with its league, but like, that game's freaking huge. Oh. Lawbreakers could have used more love and attention, absolutely. But at the same time, what it did have was technically 
some extremely unique game feel when it was good. And lastly, I mentioned a couple times already, and that's going to be Gigantic. I've actually done a specific video on a gigantic failure of Gigantic. Now, Gigantic was going to be published by Xbox. It was going to be an Xbox exclusive, also on the Windows Store. Uh, then, uh, oh man, a lot of weird stuff happened with the development of Gigantic. A lot of money seemed to be hemorrhaged somewhere, and it seemed like the developers were going back and forth on a lot of ideas, and um, that was behind the scenes. And then when it became playable in the alphas and betas, you could still see that. They were still just sitting on the one or two maps they had and just going back and forth on core design ideas, and nothing really got put out. Yeah, actually, when the game launched, we had less characters than when the game was in beta. It was just kind of a shit show with its developments, but the game, the animations, the core concept of this MOBA hero shooter, I, I don't know what you would even call it. It was this, they were a very, very unique game, more unique than anything else on this list. It was very special. And actually when all these games were being announced, like Overwatch and Gigantic, I said, it's gonna be Gigantic and Overwatch that are gonna be basically the League of Legends and Dota of this hero shooter genre. And that I really still think that could have been the case, but they squandered all of the time, effort, and money resources away, and the game never actually developed. I mean, Overwatch, Gigantic was announced earlier than Overwatch. Overwatch released, had its league, and did so much more. Other hero shooters came, even Dirty Bomb was coming through, you know, running through uh, the success and failure of that game, but still running. Gigantic, though, um, I did have some gameplay issues where the characters didn't have defined roles. Uh, a lot of the gameplay was too fast with leveling. It was very confusing. And a lot of this all has to do with basically they could never refine the true game flow of the game. Something that Lawbreakers also had a problem with, but Gigantic had way more time. It was baking in the oven forever. And it was just, I really think, a developer fault. Then uh, Microsoft was like, okay, you're taking way too long with this shit. They dropped them. Uh, Perfect World came along, swooped them up, tried to make Gigantic uh, a better game. And actually they started getting new characters, started getting new updates, and the game still had those core fundamental issues that, um, you know, on paper the game looks really cool. You get in the game though, it feels really awkward. Um, man, could have been awesome, but they never fixed those true issues that really needed time to be developed on. Uh, and, you know, people lost interest. Uh, the player base died down. There was a lot of core issues, fundamental issues like an FPS lock. So 60 FPS, but it was a competitive shooter game essentially. And you need 144 minimum. Some people don't believe that. It's true, you do. There's a lot of other uh, latency issues and like fundamental things that kept the game from being competitive. And even casual players can feel that. You can feel that. You felt it in all these games. You feel it in Gigantic, especially because it had so much competitive potential as a competitive game. I don't care if you think it was silly, casual, and cartoon and comic, but like that at its core, it's a competitive multiplayer online battle arena. And when things aren't to a competitive polish, no matter how cool the animations look, no matter how cool the abilities are, or how fun you think the gameplay is, fundamentally, it just wasn't performing. And so, it got shut down. I don't think it should have been shut down because it is technically a unique, the most unique game I've played in the past year, but just fundamentally, it just it just didn't compete, um, which is such a tragedy. I, I think it should still exist. I, I wish it still had private servers or something. I wish we could bump up the FPS. I wish we could bump up and, and somehow fix these issues, but it just, too much time, too much effort. Um, and so I guess you can't blame anybody for dropping Gigantic, but it it really was the most heart-wrenching uh, breakup uh, that I've had this past year. But that's it, guys. Uh, that's my five games. The best games that shut down. Definitely had issues with all these games. Obviously, they, they had faults, but these are the games that they were they were true games. They were releasing, they, they, they were gonna be things, <laughs> you know, they, they were gonna, they had online communities. They actually had people playing them and loving them. Their memes were being made of these games. There were guilds being formed. Things were happening in these games and they got shut down. And that's why I'm putting them up there. Cause not only did I enjoy the games, I enjoyed a lot of games, but these were established games and a lot of people did enjoy them. A lot of people hated them, but there was something there that was being played and now can no longer be played, no longer be enjoyed and no longer be a hub or friendship, uh, you know, friends and family. That, that's something to be said about these online games. You do make communities. These are like venues that are now closed down, gone, and it's all over. But hopefully you did get to play them. Hopefully you had good memories of them, and hopefully you took away something of a unique experience uh, from all of this. But these were my five. I want to know yours now. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments